Hello, 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 and welcome back to another Redstone tutorial. I'm mostly Darklink, and today what I have for you guys are a series of T flip flops. Now, if you don't know what a T flip flop is, it's something that turns a Redstone pulse into a constant signal, or in simpler terms, it turns a button into a lever. Now, why would you want to turn a button into a lever, you may ask? Well, there's a couple of reasons. The first, and my main reason, buttons just look nicer. Levers can be kind of ugly. They're also harder to hide than buttons. So if you want to do like a hidden thing or you just don't want it to stand out as much, buttons are always just going to be your better choice. Another reason, and a more technical reason, is you might need to send a pulse in one direction and have a constant signal in another, which means that you're going to need a T flip-flop to send that constant signal off to whatever direction you need that to go to. And then your pulse can just be off the button like normal. Now, a lot of these T flip flops, I did learn how to make from Mumbo Jumbo. And I have referenced the video, the specific one that I learned a lot of these from in one of my videos before, specifically my Logic Gate video. If you haven't seen Mumbo's video on T flip flops, I do suggest you give it a watch. He's very informative and he explains everything better than I'm going to be able to. At least I think so. But I did want to revisit T flip flops because it's been a couple of years and I was curious just how many new ones there are since he did his video. Uh, so in order to do my goal of having an entire playlist for my viewers of everything Redstone, I have to address T flip flops. So here's my video on it. There are a couple that were not in Mumbo's original video as well as there's been some changes to a few. So, hope you enjoy. As always, if you do, please hit that like and subscribe button. Now, let's get into it. Now, these first ones are going to be a bit familiar if you've seen my Logic Aid video. Now, this one here, what we got here is a series of droppers. So, we got this dropper pointing up into this one. This one's pointing into this hopper. And we got a hopper going down. This dropper is pointing over here, creating a nice little loop. Now, if we look in here, we got an item in this dropper. And we're getting a redstone signal. If I hit this button, we're no longer getting a signal and the item's over here. We hit the button again. And it's gonna go up over to the hopper, get sucked down. That's here, and we're getting our signal again. These are just gonna be different versions of this to give us a signal in a different direction. So if we wanted to take it out from say the side here, what we could do is dropper going up into this hopper, hopper going over into this dropper, this dropper is going down, this hopper, well this dropper is going over here. And then same thing, hit the button, no more signal, hit the button again, we get our signal. And then same thing, it's just weird. Again, range is a little bit different, hopper down here on the bottom, so our signal's coming up here instead of down there. Hit the button. There we go. Now this next one, this is going to be a very common one that you may see in a lot of older redstone videos. It's what a lot of redstone users are familiar with and comfortable with. But if we hit this button, what's happening is we're getting this piston here is shooting out this block, allowing this redstone torch to power our output. And if we hit it again, the piston goes out, takes the block away, and it's no longer powered. Now, I don't think this mechanic works on Bedrock, so this is probably a Java only. I don't think Bedrock, the spinning piston, works. But as I said, this is going to be our most common, at least for Java, e flip flop at least in older redstone videos. Now this one here, what we got is an observer. And when we hit the button, as you can see, the observer is powering this sticky piston here, which is spitting out the redstone block, powering our output, hit it again, and it retracts it. Now, some of these I've left little notes for myself, kind of like sticky notes, because if I don't, I'll forget to tell you guys. So what we got here, it was what is known as a falling edge T flip flop. Falling edge just means that the output is going to come at the end of our redstone signal. So at the end of the pulse. So when you hit the button, once the pulse is over, this redstone block is going to be pushed from one side to the other. And then whichever one we want our output taken out from, that is when it's going to happen. Falling edge, like I said, end of the pulse. Now this one here, this one is going to be fairly common and there's going to be a lot of different varieties. I built a couple down there that I'll show you later. But what we got is sticky piston, observer, other sticky piston, redstone block, kind of like the one earlier. But this one is much faster. Instead of waiting for the end, 
kind of like that, almost the falling edge. We get it right away. So nice, simple, and quick. And also, not really that big compared to the other ones. Now this one here, this one is going to be the inverse of this. If we hit our button, as you see, it switches at the beginning of the pulse instead of the end, thus being a rising edge. Now uh, we got our, oops, I forgot to take a signal out of here. But if we have our signal being taken out from wherever we want out of either this block or over here, whenever we hit this button, it's going to quickly toggle. Uh, this one here is a bit unique. It used to not function this way, but pretty much what we got is when we hit this button, you see we get a quick pulse before it toggles our signal either on or off. This isn't super practical, but if you have a machine that for whatever reason you need a pulse before it gives out a constant signal, this is perfect for that. Now the next one we have here utilizes the locked repeater. If we hit this button, it's going to unlock the repeater, send the signal, and then it's going to quickly lock the repeater, either on or off, in this case off. And then this redstone line is going to be on as a result of this torch now being able to be on and sending out the signal. And we can get our redstone signal out there. Hit it again. Now this repeater is locked on, turning off this redstone torch. And there's no longer any redstone output here, so we no longer have an output. And a wandering trader has decided to visit us while we're doing this video. They always stop by at the most inopportune times. But these next ones, what we got is a series of sticky pistons. And then we have some type of object that we can move that has an inventory. In this case, we have a cauldron with water. You can also have a composter with some compost in it. Either way it works. I'm going to need to evict him really quick. Uno momento. All right, now that we kindly asked our wandering trader to leave and he gave us some leather and leave as a uh, parting gift, we can continue on. We hit the button, sticky piston pulls it in. This sticky piston grabs it, pulls it down. Predator no longer has anything to compare to, so we no longer have a signal. Hit it again. And our item with the inventory is sent back up. Now we have something to compare it to. Now you can actually do the same thing with a copper bulb. So if we replace our item with an inventory with a copper bulb that is on, hit the button, sucks in the copper bulb, copper bulb turns off, and we no longer have an output. If we hit it again, set the copper bulb up, turns on, and we get a signal out like so. Next, we have this neat little circuit. So if we hit the button, redstone block's gonna get shot over, and then this sticky piston is going to shoot it out to where our output is. Hit again. Sucks in the redstone block. And we no longer get an output. Alright, this next one actually utilizes locking hoppers. So what we got is we got a dropper. Let's head double check it. So we got a dropper facing into a hopper and a hopper facing into our dropper. And some redstone on top and then a comparator to take an output. And we have an item in here. So when we hit this button... It's going to turn off the redstone if whatever invisible wall stop me disappears. So our item has now shot from this dropper over to this hopper and our competitor can now take an output from that. We hit it again. The item goes back and we no longer have a signal. Next up is this little hopper contraption. So we got two hoppers looking to, to each other with the computer output. This one's actually going to give us a flash before it does the T flip flop. So as you saw, it flashed, flashed again. So for whatever reason, just like the hopper minecart, not, sorry, just like the minecart one earlier, if you need a pulse, for whatever reason, before it sends a constant output, this one will work perfect for that. And this one's pulse is a lot quicker. So if you need a rapid fire pulse, this would be better to choose over the minecart version. Again, don't know why you would need to, but if you do, this is what you got. All right, now this next one is interesting because observers, if you weren't aware, can detect whether or not a hopper is powered. So we're utilizing that the power of the hopper, the observer detects that, sends out our sticky piston, which pushes it out, and we now get a power. Hit it again. 
takes away the redstone block. It's no longer power. Uh, this next one, we got a dropper and a dispenser. Dispensers facing out towards our comparator. Then we got a hopper going into the dropper, dropper going up into the dispenser. When we hit this button, What's going to happen is the dropper is going to send an item up into the dispenser. The is going to detect that. Hit it again. The dispenser is going to shoot the item out, which is going to get sucked into the hopper, go into the dropper. And it's just a nice compact version of those ones that I showed you earlier. So if you don't have a lot of material, this one could work for you. This next one is fairly simple. It's very similar to the ones that just went over. We got a hopper facing into a hopper. And if we hit this button, as you see, we get a nice little flash with our redstone signal and it turns on and off our output. We got an item going back and forth between these hoppers. So when we hit the button, redstone goes off. It allows the item to travel in between. And when the redstone comes back on, it locks the hoppers in place. This one, same exact thing, just a little bit bigger. We hit the button. There's an item in between here. It's going back and forth. These redstone torches are locking our hoppers. And then we're taking a comparator output out of whichever hopper we want. This next one is very similar to that one with the cauldron I showed you earlier. So we have a item with an inventory, which we can replace this with a cauldron with water if we wanted to. And an observer and some sticky pistons. Hit the button. This observer is going to go up here, tell this piston to quickly push out our item with the inventory. We're going to get a character output from that. Hit it again. It's going to grab the item. We no longer get a character output. Now these next two are the variants that I told you about earlier from that one with the observer and the sticky pistons. This is just to show that you can have these arranged in any direction you want. As long as you have sticky piston, observer, and the observer is powering the other sticky piston with the redstone block. You can turn these or orient them however you want, whatever fits best for your situation, for your output. And it's just nice and handy. They're kind of a very versatile little T flip flop. This next one I call the Thieves Boat T flip flop or the Thief Flop. The reason for that is most of these flip flops mumbo jumbo has in his video on t flip flops that he came out with years ago this particular youtuber almost word for word did mumbo's video and then didn't give any credit anywhere but a lot of these mumbo jumbo had compiled if you had not seen it go watch his video on t flip flops he does a really good job explaining them all but there is a t flip flop that's an older one that utilizes boats and pressure plates that no longer worked guy who pretty much stole Mumbo's video just kind of arranged these slightly different. Well, some of these weren't in the video, but you get the point. He did come up with a way to fix this broken old T flip-flop with the boat. So I did want to give him some credit, but because he didn't credit Mumbo in any way, he just took the video himself. I was torn between giving him credit or not. But my way of giving him credit is calling this the Thieves Boat T flip-flop or Thief Flop. So the way that the Thief Flop works, is we got a dispenser with a water bucket and if we hit this button it's going to dispense out the water we got soul sand here so this is going to create a bubble column which is going to push up the boat and take it off these pressure plates here and we're no longer going to get a signal out and if we hit the button again it's going to drop the boat on top of our pressure plate and giving us our redstone signal again now these walls are also important by the way because if you don't have them the boat will slowly drift off in either direction. But this one is a little unique in that, as you saw, when we hit the button, it takes it quite a while to turn off. But when we hit it again, it almost instantly turns on. So if you need a bit of a delay for your T flip flop turning off, but you want it to instantly turn back on when you hit the button, this one will work pretty well for that. Now, lastly, this one's more of an honorable mention. It's not a true flip-flop the way that I have it. And that's because in order to make it so, it's going to take a lot of effort. I saw this in one of Mumbo's videos and I thought it was neat. I wanted to just kind of show it anyways. So what we got here is if we come to this chest, we got a music disc. If we put it in this dropper, hit the button. It's going to send the music disc into this jukebox, which we can then take a redstone signal out of. And if we hit this button, it's 
hopper mine cart's gonna take the disc out, put it in this hopper, put it back into this chest. Now you can build a whole circuit to send this back up into our dropper. I didn't want to do that. <laughs> it is way more work than it's it's just not worth it. But I thought it was neat, so I figured I'd give it a kind of an honorable mention here. Now lastly, after we've gone through all of these T flip flops, we have this. What has been affectionately called the cop flop. But as you can see, it is just a copper bulb with a comparator coming out. That's it. So this tiny little thing does what all of these do in just two blocks. I cannot stress just how much the scopper bulb has revolutionized redstone circuitry. <laughs> because all of this is now condensed under this. I mean, this is just satisfying. I could just sit here doing this all day. Now, that's not to say that these are all completely useless or outdated. Each of these is going to have their own unique spot in different redstone contraptions. But you're now general all-around T-flip-flop. It's now this. All of these are now specializations. I'm having way too much fun. Okay. <laughs> enough of enough of that. Anyways. And that's it. That's all the T flip flops. Or at least all the ones that I'm aware of. Again, I'm mostly Darkling. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please hit that like and subscribe button. If there's anything in particular you want to see me do or do a tutorial on, let me know in the comments down below. Until next time, see ya!